Becca Zeli, thank you so much uh, for joining us. You always have uh, such insight on these matters. It's the first time that the nomination process was opened up, and it's the first time that more than one candidate is going to be interviewed for the Chief Justice position. Uh, good morning, Annika, and good morning to the viewers at home. Yes, this is a historic moment. It is the first time that we're having uh, uh, four candidates nominated for Chief Justice. Usually we'd have only one. And it's it's interesting to see the, how the quality... The, the, candidates measure up against each other. All of them uh, have in common the fact that they are excellent judges, but each one of them has their own traits, which I think stand them out above the, the other candidates. Um, but so far, the, the process that has led to this point um, has been an, an important one, and it is a historical, uh, historic moment that we're at. Mbeka uh, one of the one of the problems that those in the judiciary have commented on is that there is a lack of leadership. There's a leadership vacuum at the moment in the Constitutional Court, and uh, judgments are coming in very slowly. They seem to be uh, overburdened by the amount of judgments that need to come out. Uh, how important or how difficult is it going to be to get that leadership uh, back into the court and get things running as smoothly as they should be? Well, uh, getting uh, really good leadership at the top of the judiciary um, is an, um, a, a, an important uh, uh, responsibility, not only uh, on the Judicial Service Commission, but also on the, on the president. So this is only the first step in getting that leadership uh, in, in place. The, the Chief Justice is, is, is crucial in, in, a, in restoring the institution of the judiciary to work um, uh, as, as best as it, it is supposed to, but it, it not only stops there. So, however, the, the, the real uh, test uh, for this process is on getting someone who has all the qualities we need to be able to respond to the problems that you've identified. So we need someone who has a proven track record in leadership, who's going to be able to take charge of the court. You mentioned that the constitutional court is not functioning perhaps as well as it should. The judges are taking, the judgments are taking a bit longer than uh, 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 they have in the past. But the part of that is, is structural in terms of there was an amendment to the um, uh, uh, constitution and it opened up the court to dealing with all cases as opposed to um, only constitutional cases. That has caused some of the delays, but also having a good leader in place, they were able to put the systems to ensure that despite the increased workload, which is exponentially increased, um, they, they still will be able to perform as best as, as, as they can. Because early, something that's always bothered me is that the three arms of state, <coughs> I beg your pardon, the three arms of state, the judiciary, the legislature and the executive have to be independent. Yet it's the president who ultimately decides on who is going to be the next chief justice. Surely there's some sort of conflict there. Well, there's no conflict at all. Um... The, the all three arms of state must are, are, are independent, but they are also interdependent, because um, they, they 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 are interdependent in the sense that. Um, they hold each other accountable to the constitution. So the president is responsible for uh, appointing the chief justice, but the chief justice must hold, also hold both parliament and the president and the rest of government uh, uh, for that matter. They must hold them accountable and when they don't follow or comply with the constitution, they must call them to account through uh, judgments. So it's not necessarily a conflict, but it is an interdependency, which is healthy for a democracy such as ours. Mbegazeli, let's just look at the candidates very quickly. We've got Acting Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. He's been very much in the media spotlight because of the Zondo uh, Commission of Inquiry. We've got uh, Justice Madlanga, uh, who has been in the court uh, with groundbreaking judgments since 2013. 
And then we've got the two outsiders, SCA President Mandisa, uh, Mandisa Maya, uh, who's known for having a strong leadership role at the Supreme Court. And then uh, Gauteng JP Chief... Uh, Dunson and Mlambo, uh, who was also JP of the Labour Court and the Gaut, uh, Labour Appeals Court, I think, at one stage. He's got good leadership qualities, but both of them are outsiders. They haven't sat in the court. Yes, um, the fact that they have not spent uh, a, a great deal of time in the constitutional court does put them at a disadvantage because the constitutional court has a particular style particular traditions and, and way of working. And the constitutional courts, all the judges are, are equals. Um, the chief justice is, is only the first among equals. And so the, the co collegiality is, is the clue that holds that court together. So being an outsider will um, make it difficult at, at least initially, for the chief justice to find their feet and to be able to be effective. But that is not the only um, uh, quality or aspect that we must look at this, because the chief justice has responsibilities beyond the constitutional court. So we need someone who's able to build systems within the judiciary, who's able to manage and administer those systems in a way that um, the, the, the judiciary should operate as a well-functioning machine. So both of the outsiders, um, um, Justice Maya and Justice uh, and Judge uh, President Mlambo, they have a proven track record in leadership in administration. So they can be able to take charge of the other aspects of of the of the judiciary beyond the constitutional court. All the, right. The, this, the advantage of being an ad, uh, outsider. Um, it, it, just to wrap up this point quickly, Thank the you. advantage of being an outsider is that they are not term limited. So that's that's one advantage that they have above the the other two. Thank you so much for your insights and hopefully we can uh, track this and speak to you at the end of the week when the interviews wrap up. That was Judges Matter researcher Mbekezeli Benjamin. Thank you again for your time.